Hey guys, it's Malfoy here once again with some hot, spicy POE action for the first time in a couple of weeks. And uh, it's a character I kind of wanted to make for a bit. Uh, it is hit based Armageddon brand. So we are not talking like Ignite Armageddon brand, we are talking Armageddon brand that is based off of crit and hit damage. And uh, I really wanted to use a Crest of Desire at some point this league, and that's how this character came about. Uh, I'm pretty damn surprised how hard Armageddon Brand is in the end hitting. I thought it'd do a few million DPS and be a nice safe playstyle, but in the end with this setup using a Crest of Desire for its plus 8 gem levels and a bit of extra quality for the cast speed since I'm only using the default um, Armageddon Brand, just does cast speed for the quality, and then the double damage. Uh, ends up being pretty damn good. It's probably better than a six link otherwise and it frees up some gem sockets for other bullshit anyway So Crested Desire, it's been it's as cheap basically as it's ever been uh, This league because it's not too meta for almost anything uh, Except for like some herald bullshit and maybe a creeping frost or something like that and uh, It was my first time. I really gave myself the um chance to use it because it was only one and a half x one x something like that and turned out pretty good so the build itself is just armageddon brand with hit and crit base um, as an elementalist so i am using golems for the first time in a while as well to scale all of my um just golem buff effect for generic everything gives you some regen crit uh cast speed Fizz damage reduction and regular damage. And I'm using an Ashes of the Stars for this build just to boost that golem quality a bit more even so. Um, not particularly mandatory in this build at all. Just makes it a little bit nicer um, for golem qualities, but um, it fit into the build all right. Like I said, the Armageddon brand itself does have a couple alt qualities, but none that makes sense for a Crest of Desire. So it's just extra cast speed but the quality with Ashes, Stars, and Crest the Desire does end up giving like 40 to 50 extra cast speed, so it's actually pretty damn nice. And the biggest problem with Brands, and Armageddon Brand in particular, is the delay that it has on the um, cast and the attack, so I'm trying my best to overcome that with as much cast speed as humanly possible. Uh, not quite as much as humanly possible, but I did go out of my way to get a fair bit, um, and it's it helped, but ultimately it's just still going to be a delayed skill and it won't be to everyone's liking. It wasn't to my liking all that much particularly, but once I got the character up and running and fully juiced, so he's uh, pretty thick, got like 90% fizz damage reduction and really good regen, so during mapping I've got 1700 life regen, um, but if I turn on RF, I've still got something like a thousand life regen, so it all works out pretty well. I only turn on RF during boss fights for the extra damage. Uh, so it ends up being pretty thick, and you really do have to adjust your playstyle. So early on, and for most of the character, I'd say, I was kind of just like putting out Armageddon brands and then just watching them activate and kill stuff, where what you really kind of have to get used to doing is just putting down your skill, your cast, and then moving on and trusting in the process and the fact that things will die uh, if you want to you know speed up your gameplay and maximize your efficiency with it otherwise yeah still nothing wrong with just playing it normally and putting down your skill watching things die and then moving on a little bit slower but to make it sort of like catch up to the other skills uh, that don't have a delay you do kind of just want to drop your skill and keep moving and since you can have with this type of a setup, with um, only specking a mastery uh, for a couple extra brands, we have five brands total. You can have quite a lot of destruction going all the way across the screen. Um, but it's not really a mapping specialist. It does okay. I died like, I don't know, once or some shit throughout the mapping and bossing process, so it was pretty good for bossing. Um, as I was saying, it's not the best for mapping, but for bossing, that's where brands typically really come into their own because um, that's where it has this sort of real totem-like playstyle, but even more passive than that, because you just put down a couple of brands and then kind of focus on living and running around and doing mechanics. Uh, this is actually surprisingly a um, flawless Chiyula 
breach run, which I put in because I had anyway thought, fuck it, if I'm going to witness a chill, I may as well do the floors. And I thought I had no chance of doing it because of the delay and because my character doesn't have a whole bunch of life against um, maybe some like extra Ellie or Chaos or some shit. And I really didn't think I'd make the timer because flaws, Sheila breaches are super like strict on the timer and you need to be pumping deeps and you need to be moving fast. I barely squeaked by it like a few seconds remaining and then also did Deathless Maven to Chiula. So in the end, that was um, very surprising uh, for this build. I've only done it on a couple other characters to fully clear a flawless Chiula breach stone and not die um, during the boss fight. So that was a pleasant surprise in, in and of itself. But as you can see, it does get dicey. And I'd say with the wrong map rolls, since it has RNG map rolls, it could definitely um, become a brick. But uh, this time around, it went pretty well. The other real flaw in Armageddon Brand is uh, just if bosses move around a lot. So Chiula, while he's doing his spin attack, your Armageddon Brand is doing damn near zero damage because it has this um, sort of wind up slam to it where if it's constantly pounding away and a boss or a mob is constantly moving, you basically always miss your Armageddon brands. It doesn't seem to be an issue for too many bosses or for too many situations, but it is, regardless, slightly an issue. Uh, you know, there will be some bosses, Phoenix and Hydra or some shit that just run around, but ultimately, uh, none of that was really an issue because DPS is so freaking good. So this is uh, the feared fight, and yeah, that went down pretty quick and pretty easy. I was surprised at how quick the bosses died and uh, how smooth it was. Like I said, the playstyle ends up being pretty damn nice where you can just put down your brands and then move on. And as well as that, you can typically have pretty much your full damage going off on two targets at once. So two brands on one enemy, two brands on another enemy. The only difference is you can only mark one enemy at a time. So there'll be slight damage differential between those two um, enemies at the same time. But that does really mean that for these types of fights you're getting like twice as much output as a normal build because you are attacking two things at the same time uh, pretty much always with 100% uptime. So that's kind of the character there or how it plays out. Very surprised and pleasantly um, in pleasantly surprised yeah enjoyed uh, Armageddon brand and just lastly as a clip this is how I crafted my chest just to let you know that yep good things can happen to those that um, praise Chris Wilson's RNG uh, so otherwise I will go ahead and show you how I built the character and um, how it's all looking from here so currently the character level 91 about to hit 92 but um, I don't know kind of stopped playing at that point and uh, was already bossing like at early level 91. So most of this XP is just like bossing XP, especially the Chiula Breach. Uh, and the character name is fucking Wowick Piver Rage. It's a Quinn stream meme. So um, no need to concern yourself with that otherwise. So almost level 92 elementalist. I think I could have and probably should have pushed for about 94 if I could be fucked. But um, it's just kind of late league PoE. So I don't have super large amounts of desire to map. For, I don't know, no reason really. And uh, might try some D2 later on today anyway with the new ladder. So the character's currently based around Armageddon brand um, and basically Crest of Desire. I wanted to make Crest of Desire work and the challenge with that was going to be getting fire penetration or you know fixing the elemental penetration for whatever you were going to do with it um, because you can't get like a fire pen or alley pen gem into the setup or a trinity or anything like that so it's either going to be uh an inquisitor which i've done several of this league or i could go with something like an elementalist so that i could use the exposure ascendancy for a whole bunch of extra negative fire so that's why i picked elementalist to begin with it was basically no other choice in my mind um because i needed mastermind of discord uh, and then at the same time I thought, hey, this is a good time to run some golems and get um, all the buff effect from them and run an Ashes of the Stars to fit in a little bit more quality. And as you, as you can see in the end, um, 45 car speed from this amount of quality for the Armageddon brand. There is an anomalous version which does um, double damage, so if you stack all this um, quality with uh, the Armageddon brand there, that'd be great, but... Um, 
doesn't make sense with Cresta Desire because it already has skills to deal double damage. That's a 100% chance to double damage. You can't have more than a 100% chance to double damage. So it's a worthless quality for this setup specifically. Um, so the challenge is to make plus eight levels and double damage overcome a proper six link or in some cases like a seven link, that sort of thing. And I think it does work in this case. And uh, stacking a few more levels, so from the gem itself, from the... Um, amulet and from the shield you do have yourself uh, a level 31 at the moment and that is three to four and a half thousand fire damage so it's got a huge amount of base but then it doesn't have any percent mores from um, sockets and all that uh, otherwise it's also got that double damage and then with all that stack of, uh, of quality it's a 45 extra cast speed which is essentially a cast faster casting gem which is a terrible use of a link but still pretty um, high value from general amount of cast speed that you're trying to get for a build uh so then we've got as you just then saw the chest i was trying to go for was just going to have spell crit i wanted i wanted some life regen as well um so it was just those two and then i was going to finish off the prefixes myself with lock the suffixes and then of course go um reforge caster since that would guarantee curse but happened to get pretty lucky and just hit everything i needed without even doing anything so that's currently what that looks like but we don't need the increased effect on curse auras and you know the life region i didn't even need that much of it but uh we got that and then it just would have cost more to finish basically if i was gonna try and get this thing but it saved me a bunch of money and can't complain with that so very cool stuff there um then nothing else really special actually it's just um this is a basic pair of gloves with some fire exposure on it and unnerve so the crit against shocked enemies doesn't work in my build so it's just regen and some resist and stuff uh because in the end i did decide to help out with the penetration um problem using secrets of suffering so that gives me max level scorch should be able to notice throughout the clips um which is another 30 percent uh fire pen basically um, pretty much all the time. And on top of that, we do get a little bit of brittle, which is kind of showcasing just how strong this shit is, the whole brittle mechanic. Um, you know, getting a small amount of brittle, like 5%, so at a third of its value, is not too hard to do. And it's so not hard to do that I'm getting it from this craft here. This 10 to 16 cold damage turns into 150, 250 cold damage. And then all the crits um, and double damages and crit multis and a bit of ailment effect here, a bit of ailment effect there, does get me to like 5% baseline brittle pretty much always that you would be able to see from the video um, against most hard bosses. So even shapers and all that sort of shit have 5% extra crit against them just because of 10 cold damage pretty crazy um but i didn't really need it I, it was mostly for the scorch and um my crit was okay otherwise and i could have built more into crit to not need the brittle so brittle is a bit of a crutch in this one it's just extra damage for the sake of extra damage and the scorch is what we were looking for and maven boots did exist for scorch factor i was i wanted to use those that was the original plan but uh the nearby range on those it's honestly too small for something like this um so I did try them out, but the nearby range is just too small when this is a build that can easily just be running away from things and letting the damage be a bit more passive. They're really much more suited to Righteous Fire and builds like that. So I couldn't use them in the end, and that's why I went with a Secrets of Suffering. Uh, then just using my usual regen belt, got a flammability ring with, you know, cast speed on it, um, went with cast speed, strength ring, need a bit of strength in my build. Picked up this guy for 1x, I think, 50c, 1x, something like that. And that, uh, the whole purpose of it was just to get ailment avoidance cap and plus one fire gems. Also managed to get a, you know, reserve roll on it. And um, I'm not even sure that's strictly necessary. It just makes mana a bit better. Uh, otherwise, could have used an enlightened gem, which I you know, didn't need to do. So with the reservation, I am currently doing, um, as you can see, a whole bunch of shit. Determination, Petrified Blood, Zealotry, Defiance Banner, Vitality, and Herald of Ash. Those are going on my life. And then I'm going low life. So Herald of Ash, uh, Vitality, Righteous Fire, and Arrogance are attached over here. And um, then you run low life. 
for the extra damage. Then you've got to run Petrified Blood so that you're not actually that low life. And uh, yeah, that's what the tree looks like. We do have some reservation and shit over there. Um, thanks to the golems and determination and armor and all that, we are sitting at 90% fizz damage reduction pretty much always. You can see it's 1800 regen at the moment. I got some calves for us. And uh, I went ailment immune thanks to mostly the boots, but also the shield and the craft there. And if I press RF, it's still going to be sustaining quite healthily. Don't know how much it actually is over the cap at the moment, but quite a bit, considering my life isn't that uh, high and my region is very high. So you could have spec more into life if you really want to. I don't think it's super necessary given how this all feels. Uh, mana was a slight issue in this build. Uh, you do need an anima stone. Uh, my you know, large cluster here does almost nothing, but fuck it, I did need something, and I got a bit of leech on it. Uh, what else did I want to say? A little bit of dexterity was needed, um, but yeah, mana was a slight issue, and to fix mana, basically, you just need some regen, and a minus mana craft is what I put over here, and uh, you can't really spam too much, but you shouldn't need to. In general, you're only applying a couple of brands at a time, and then moving on. If you just spammed with this level of skill, uh, then you'd go in pretty quick. And luckily, it's only a one link. There's no links attached, so the mana cost kind of takes care of itself. You could otherwise just do some clarity stuff on your life as well if you wanted to. But that's fine. So that's the character. That's the build. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it does cost a bit if you're going to do a Crest of Desire and, you know, get the right um, sort of chest. But it's all kind of luxury and stuff. Um, and then also, yeah, just grabbed a Fractured Wand and did Cast Speed Essences. My goal was to get Cold Damage on here, so I didn't need to get Cold Damage there, and it would apply a more powerful Brittle, but that's what it landed with. Anyway, in any case, thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the build and the video. Armageddon brand, I think it's pretty viable. Crest of Desire, I do think that's pretty viable too, but you can look into um, other Armageddon brands if you want. It's not going to be for everyone. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.